I would like to announce that I am starting a new course on building a microservices based application using Spring Boot. In this course, we are going to build a bookstore application using Spring Boot, Spring Cloud and Docker. As you can see in this architecture diagram, we are going to build a catalog service, an order service, a notification service and we are going to build a API gateway which delegates the request to one of these services. And there is a bookstore web application which is a uh, customer facing web application where users can browse the catalog of products and then place an order. And we are going to secure our microservices based application using OAuth2 and we are going to use Keycloak as identity provider. And within this application there is various types of communication happens like there is a synchronous communication between services like order service will call catalog service through a REST API call. And there is an asynchronous communication where order service put an event in the message broker. In this case, we are going to use RabbitMQ and notification service is going to consume those events and then process accordingly. So if you take a look at these modules, so here we can see catalog service. This is a simple REST API for managing a catalog of products, in our case books. And we are going to use Spring Boot and Spring Data JPA and PostgreSQL. And then there is order service. This is also exposes REST API for managing orders and also publishes order related events to the message broker. We are going to use RabbitMQ for this. And also it is secured with Spring Security OAuth2 and Keycloak because only authenticated users should be able to place an order or view their placed orders, right? So we are going to secure them using Spring Security OAuth. And in this module also we are going to use Spring Data JPA, PostgreSQL and RabbitMQ. And then there is a notification service which receives the order events published by order service and then uh, it sends notification emails to the customers. Here we are going to use Spring Boot and RabbitMQ. And there is an API gateway which acts as obviously as a gateway to the internal backend services. Because we don't want to expose all our internal microservices based architecture to the uh, consumers. In our case, here our book web store, uh, bookstore web application is the consumer but if uh, we are going to expose any of our services to the public we don't want to expose all of the internal structure of our uh, services. Instead we uh, isolate all of them behind an API gateway and we will only expose APIs through API gateway. And we are going to talk more about it in the upcoming videos. And here we are going to use Spring Boot and Spring Cloud Gateway for implementing our API Gateway. And finally there is a bookstore web application and uh, this can be built in a wide variety of ways like uh, you can use a single page application frameworks like Angular or React or anything like that or you can build it as a, a traditional uh, server side rendering technologies like uh, key, um, time leaf uh, etc. So in this case my main focus is on building this part like API gateway, authorization server and various microservices but to make it complete I am going to build this bookstore web application also and I am going to use um, Timeleaf and Alpine.js and also I am going to protect this web application using Spring Security OAuth2 and Keycloak. So these are the services that we are going to build and obviously I know you might be uh, thinking of where is my uh, config server, where is my Eureka server, all these things. Typically when people build a Spring Boot based microservices, all of those services uh, are being used. But lately most of the companies are uh, using containerization technologies like uh, Docker, Kubernetes for running their services. So I am thinking of 
building this application and hoping this would be uh, deployed on a Kubernetes cluster. When using Kubernetes cluster, some of these services might not be required. What are the uh, services that are offered by uh, Spring Cloud modules are already uh, provided by uh, Kubernetes. So for example, Eureka server is kind of a, a load balancer. But in uh, Kubernetes, there is a services concept which automatically provides that load balancing concept. So I would say it is a redundant to again build Eureka server and then deploy into Kubernetes. So we are going to talk about various options and why we are choosing one approach over the other as we go along in this series. So now what are the learning objectives from this series? So we are going to cover a lot of uh, things that are uh, part of building this microservices based application and these are some of the uh, objectives that I would like to cover in this part in this series. So first thing obviously we are going to build uh, REST APIs using uh, Spring Boot and we are going to learn how to use Spring Data JPA, Postgres and then uh, use Flyway for database migrations. And as I mentioned, we are going to have some asynchronous based communication and we are going to use RabbitMQ for that and uh, see how we can communicate between different services in an asynchronous fashion. Also, we are going to implement OAuth based security using Spring Security and Keycloak. And we are going to create an API gateway using Spring Cloud Gateway and uh, we are going to create Swagger documentation at the API gateway level, instead of accessing a separate uh, Swagger documentation for each service, we would like to have a consolidated uh, Swagger documentation that is exposed by the API gateway level. And then uh, we are going to build some resiliency uh, features like a circuit breaker or retrying or timeout using resilience for J. So here, when we place an order, it is going to call catalog service to check whether the product exists or product price is correct or not, things like that. So that is going to happen by a REST API call. So in that case, we are going to use a REST client and uh, we are going to use a resiliency for j to apply all those circuit breaker uh, logic. And also we are going to uh, write some of the jobs. For example, when, when a customer places an order, we are going to use a job scheduler to pick all the new uh, orders and then process them. But one thing is when you are uh, deploying this service, maybe you might run uh, multiple instances of the order service. So in such cases, we should, uh, there is a chance that there are uh, multiple uh, job schedulers get triggered on different instances and there could be a uh, duplicate processing of the jobs. So to prevent that, we are going to use uh, shed lock to apply distributed locking. And then, uh, as I mentioned, uh, there is a communication between auto service and catalog service. There we are going to use REST client. And then there is another approach also to uh, build a REST client using declarative HTTP interfaces. So here we are building our uh, web application and it is going to talk to uh, API gateway and here we are going to use declarative HTTP interfaces to uh, have a uh, API invocations. So and then uh, we are going to learn how we can make local development setup much easier and simpler using Docker, Docker Compose and test containers. As we build various services and features, we are going to write uh, tests also using JUnit5 and REST Assured and test containers and availability for uh, testing asynchronous flows and wire mock. So here, as I mentioned, our service is going to talk to a catalog service. So while testing, we need to mock this communication. So in that case, we are going to use wire mock. And we are going to use uh, Timeleaf and Bootstrap for CSS. And here Alpine.js, uh, if you haven't heard about Alpine.js, I would uh, recommend to take a look at it. So the main reason why I am using Alpine.js is um, all our services expose uh, REST APIs. So instead of, uh, again, consuming uh, the service responses and then uh, build Timeleaf-based uh, rendering, 
I use Alpine.js to directly consume those APIs and then uh, I, uh, render the web UI. So we'll see how uh, we can use Alpine.js and then uh, consume those REST APIs and build the UI uh, layer. And this is all going to be covered as part of this course. And on top of it, I am planning to cover more advanced topics like uh, how to monitor and then implement the observability using um, uh, Spring Boot's micrometer and then Grafana stack like uh, Grafana for visualization, Prometheus for uh, uh, matrix uh, uh, scraping and Loki for logging, uh, Tempo for uh, tracing. And uh, finally, I would like to uh, explain how we can uh, deploy this application, entire microservice based application uh, on Kubernetes. So these are the three things uh, I may cover, but if I cover at all, uh, they most likely be as a, a membership uh, viewer. Like uh, you may have to take uh, YouTube membership to see this, or if I ever publish this as a Udemy course, maybe you need to buy. So this is the plan and uh, just to give a uh, heads up on what is uh, required for, uh, to start with this course uh, if you want to follow along that is the best approach that if you are really interested to learn instead of just watching the video i would highly recommend to follow along uh, each video and try it out because if some if you just keep watching how somebody else is building that could look like very easy but if you really try it out uh, you may encounter some issues and then uh, you learn how to debug and all so i highly recommend you to follow along so here we are going to use uh, spring boot 3.x and then java 21 and we are going to use docker heavily so i highly recommend you to uh, install docker desktop and i am going to use intellij idea but if uh, it is up to you but i highly recommend you to give it a try intellij idea if you are not using it yet um, there are some nice features and uh, it has powerful features as well and also uh, as we are building a lot of rest apis uh, we are going to use postman or if you are uh, interested to use any other uh, clients like uh, insomnia or anything like that you can use whatever uh, uh, you like I would like to show you the uh, bookstore application, how it would look like once we complete the entire application. So here is how the bookstore application would look like. So here uh, in the catalog, uh, we can see various books and we can navigate across uh, different pages and we can add uh, books to the cart. So if I try to click on this cart, this is protected page where uh, without logging in, it will uh, redirect me to the login page. So here is the key clocks login page. So I am logging in with my credentials. Once I logged in, I can see the cart page here. We can increase or decrease the uh, uh, quantity of uh, products. And I have pre-populated some of these details because I'm lazy to type all these details again and again. So uh, now I can place the order and the order is created with the status new and there will be a background job that keeps pulling for the new orders and then uh, automatically mark them as uh, delivered. So to simulate this order processing um, in an automated fashion. So if I click on orders, I can see all the orders placed by the current uh, customer and I can click on any of these and then I can see more details about that particular uh, product. So this is the overall application and if I try to log out and log in again, uh, there is a provision to uh, register as well as a new user. So this is the overall application that we are going to build. As you can see, this is a very simple uh, shopping cart application. Uh, the purpose is not to build the greatest shopping cart application here. So uh, the whole uh, purpose is to learn microservices concepts and how to implement it using Spring Boot. So I cut down all these uh, uh, nice uh, features. For example, there is no product page. Usually you may want to click on this uh, book and then she uh, see more details about that product, but that is not going to teach you anything new. 
like uh, you know how to render a page when you have the data so you you are going to replicate the same thing that you know so i have uh, removed all those uh, things that are not going to teach you anything new and only put the features that you learn something uh, a new concept so this is the overall application and uh, i'm sure we're going to learn a ton of things about spring boot and microservices while building this application our API gateway is running on port 8989. So here I am accessing the Swagger UI at the API gateway level and I have configured all the downstream services to be shown as groups here. So right now we are seeing the catalog uh, API endpoints here and if I select orders it will show all the order um, service API endpoints here. So we don't have to go to a different uh, uh, Swagger documentation page for each service. Instead we can uh, see all the services uh, documentation at the API gateway level. So uh, in addition to that, here is how our Grafana stack based monitoring looks like. So here I have automated this process of creating the dashboards and then configuring uh, low key tempo uh, for uh, various uh, monitoring aspects. So if I go to dashboards, I can select the service and then I can see various uh, monitoring details like uh, what are the API endpoints and uh, how many requests are fired. So various, uh, we there are many uh, free dashboards available on Grafana site. We can leverage uh, any of them. So here is one of the uh, dashboard. And if I go to explore, so here there are uh, various uh, data sources. Tempo is for uh, tracing and loc is for logs and prompt is for uh, metrics so here if i select a uh, low key and i can select the container and which container i want to see for example i want to check the logs of order service so here i would like to select last 30 minutes and here you can see various logs of uh, order service and you can also see the trace id uh, if you click on this tempo link it will take you to this uh, specific log related trace and you can see how it performed and you can dig into uh, more details so this is how we can uh, configure various uh, grafana stack for uh, monitoring we have low key tempo prometheus based uh, monitoring okay so this is what we are going to build as part of this microservices course in the next video, we are going to start uh, first talking about what is microservices architecture and why we went from building monolithic application to microservices in the first place and what are the pros and cons. So we are going to start with understanding microservices and then we'll start building catalog service. Mm -hmm.